Destroying my kitchen, taking this 55 inch OLED TV off the wall, replacing it with a 65 inch nano cell, whatever that is, TV, moving the LED strip from this TV to the new one and creating a little gaming center right here in the kitchen are all things that we're going to be doing in today's video. My name's Alex, this is TechFlow, let's do this. So I know the question on the tech savvy people's heads straight away is gonna be, Alex, why are, you why are you replacing an OLED TV with a non-OLED TV? Like, aren't you just going backwards in technology? And I, I do totally take your point. Actually, before I take this TV off the wall, there's like loads of stuff behind it that I need to take out, like a Nintendo Wii and stuff. So there's gonna be loads of stuff that falls down, I think. Are we good? Okay, we're good, we're good. The reason I'm replacing this huge, lovely, big OLED LG panel with a different nanocell TV is, well, there's a few reasons. Number one, the nanocell TV that I've got to put here and replace is 10 inches bigger than this. I wanted a bigger TV. The other issue is, as much as I love OLED, I also don't like it at the same time. And that video will explain exactly why that is after this little sequence. So our new TV is out of the garage and right here, but I'm not gonna unbox it right now because I'm gonna focus on the LG CV7, the older model of TV that I have, whilst I'm taking this LifeX strip off the back, which by the way, isn't long enough to go around the new TV, so we're gonna have to put an extension module on it. So this TV, OLED, Alex, why are you replacing it? Now obviously I've already mentioned that I want a bit of a bigger TV, but the fact is this TV is an OLED, which in people's heads gives you, well, better blacks, which is much nicer for watching videos. But I don't know if you guys have noticed this, my kitchen is kind of light and airy. Right here, there's like three huge windows, and that is the problem with OLED. And sometimes with an OLED TV, the blacks are that black and the darks are that dark that the image is genuinely quite dark. And when you've got loads of light pouring in with big natural windows here, bringing all the natural light in, and you've got a really dark picture on the TV, those two things don't really go together and I find myself sat here in the daytime not really being able to see what's on the screen. I'm having to squint. At night, absolutely fine. This thing is awesome, but in the daytime, in this room, you can't really use it all well. Okay, so this is LG's newest offering, the LG SM90 NanoCell TV. Now, as we're all aware, this isn't an OLED TV. This is a nanocell TV. So why is nanocell good for what I want? And that's what this is all about, what I want in my kitchen. Certain TVs are good for certain types of things. So the nanocell tech in this TV is essentially just a marketing scheme or a marketing tactic for sort of improved viewing angles, improved contrast, and improved color essentially all it is. Now, a lot of these improvements that LG are dubbing NanoCell were, again, back in the day, what OLED was so good for, if you think about it. Improved viewing angles, deeper blacks, meaning better contrast. And LG is saying, well, we're doing it here, but with an IPS 4K HDR panel that's got full LED array backlighting. So this thing should be, again, light enough, or sorry, bright enough for my kitchen, as well as providing me, and this is the most important one, a lower millisecond in response time compared to our last OLED, which means, yes, we can crack out some games in 4K HDR on here, in 65 inches, in the kitchen. This is gonna be awesome. Ah, 
Okay, so guys, here we go. Because of the extra size of this TV too, um, I'm gonna have to install an extra Z strip from LifeX because the original strip that went around the last TV obviously isn't gonna be long enough to go around this one. So that is our next order of business, installing LEDs to a back of a TV. I swear I've done a video about installing LEDs to a TV and it's got over a million views. So let's do a mini recap of that right now, but the 2019 version. Okay, this thing is absolutely huge. Um, Whoa, this thing is absolutely huge. Let's hope I can... Am I on? Yeah. I'm on. Okay, I think... We're on. <laughs> oh my God, that is absolutely massive. What? I quite like it though, because it's, it's the same length as the unit. That is huge. Huge, mate. Okay. So these are essentially all the cables that I've already got run for the TV that was here before, and obviously they'll still work with this TV. We've got a single HDMI cable. Now I wish I'd ran two. If you are ever running HDMI cables to a TV, always run two, because it's better than one. But one of these cables goes into, well, the undersized cupboard, so you can plug things into this TV. It's the only way you can really connect to it. And then we've got an optical cable. This will plug into the TV, and it feeds down to these KEF speakers, so you can use the 2.1 KEF setup with whatever is plugged into the TV. And then we've got a Cat6 Ethernet cable. This goes into a switch that's also in the understairs cupboard and that then will give this wired Ethernet backhaul for all of the smart connected applications. We've got power for the TV, which we need to plug in. We've got power for the LED strips we need to plug in. We've got power from the Chromecast 4K that's also on the back of this that we need to plug in. But it's on the wall and it hasn't fallen off yet. So touch wood, this is gonna go well. So these are both of the remotes. We've got old here and new. Funny little things to know. On here we have an Amazon logo, whereas on the new remote we have a Prime Video logo. They've gotten rid of these sort of useless buttons at the bottom. I've never even used these, replaced them with a play, pause and a movies button. So I've got some setting up to do as far as Netflix piping in and piping in my Prime Video membership details. However, what I thought we could do is try some HDR 4K gaming. Now instantly, this TV, as you guys can see, is so much brighter from the last one. It's displaying these sort of fake picture frames, if you like, while saying not programmed. And just from these images alone, I can tell that this is gonna be a much more pleasant experience trying to watch this in the middle of the day when the sun is beating down in the garden. Now, I would go ahead and plug a PC into this, but as soon as this is a TV, I think a games console is more fitting. Got an Xbox One X here that's capable of doing some 4K HDR gaming, so let's plug this in here, get it fired up, and have a little sesh on the new 65 inch. So, Xbox One X all plugged in. Now, as you can see, I've tried to launch Gears of War 4, and it's come up saying advanced video features. It looks like your TV supports advanced video features. What it's meaning here is HDR, different bits and bobs like that. So we're gonna go ahead, click enable in the settings. So, instant game response is launched, is what the TV came up with as a pop-up when I changed the setting. Now, what have I actually done here? I've enabled 120 hertz, which is essentially 120 frames a second from the Xbox onto this TV. And as you can see, it's displaying absolutely fine, which is what makes this thing so good for gaming. Like that is, think about that for a second. This is a, this is a 65 inch TV, not a computer monitor. And we've got 120 Hertz. Now that's not at 4K though, I have to say. We can only get 60 Hertz at 4K, which is still more than adequate. And I would prefer actually to game at 4K in a lounge environment than the trade-off 
of refresh rate. So I'm gonna flick this back to 4K now. So with essentially all of these absolutely awesome features ticked, I think we're ready to go. No means is this a full-on review of this television. I mean, I don't really know why a TV by itself would warrant its own full review. I mean, at the end of the day, a TV is a TV. This was more of a fun video of us just installing it and putting the LEDs on the back of it and then later installing a 65-inch gaming monster in my kitchen. But what makes this the gaming monster that I am claiming it to be and that is what is plastered all over the website? Well, it's the Nano Cell Tech. The fact that this uses an IPS panel means that you've got fast response times, around 15 milliseconds compared to the almost 25 to 30 over on OLED. And one thing you've noticed as I'm playing this game, I'm simply not having to squint my eyes to actually see what is going on on the TV. It's very, very bright. Even with our bright filming lights on in here, it's still not a problem whatsoever. This would have been just a no-no on the previous model. So you guys will be thinking, Alex, why do they call this the Nano Cell TV? What is actually the tech behind that? And essentially it's just a nano coating that goes over the IPS panel of this screen and essentially gives you those deeper, richer blacks, the better viewing angles, the brighter contrast, especially for a room like this. So there you are. This is the new 2019 Nano Cell TV installed in the kitchen. Now this is by no means a video of me bashing OLED. I absolutely loved that OLED TV. In fact, the blacks on it, I'm missing them already, like I actually am. However, this, for me, is better. I'd rather sacrifice the blacks and have it so I can actually see the screen and at the same time play games at 10-bit 4K HDR at 60 FPS. So for now guys, my name's been Alex, this has been Techflow, we've been installing it. We'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.